So this is Steve Wheeler for Linksop Project. What do you think is Learning 2.0 support? Does it support inclusive lifelong learning? E-Learning 2.0, that's a strange term, isn't it? It was first coined by a guy called Stephen Downs. Hello, Stephen, if you're watching, who's a Canadian academic. And um, as far as I'm, I can see it, Learning 2.0, is about a, a shift in the, the emphasis of learning whereby the learner actually creates their own content, where the learner uses their own personal tools, uh, where the learner actually collaborates with people that they think are useful to collaborate with in terms of learning. So I, I suppose e-learning 2.0 is making some changes. Um, the changes are the shift in the emphasis of what the teacher does. The teacher's becoming more of a guide than a, um, a, a an instructor, so so that's an important shift. There are also shifts in the way that uh, students are using their tools now. So, personal web tools, for instance, are becoming much more central to what the student, what the learner is doing. They're choosing their tools, um, whether it's a blog, whether it's um, podcasts, whether it's video, whatever the tools that they're using, they're using them to create content, share it with each other. Um, enter into discussion online, enter into collaborative relationships with each other, and generally forging their own pathways. So, so that is, for me, is the major shift in what e-learning 2.0 is all about. Um, there's been, there have been a lot of experiments in, in the area and also for e-learning, um, but some of them, or most of them, remain isolated. Um, do you think isolated experiments in the area can be mainstreamed? Of course it can. I mean, it's a simple case of um, something I'm doing maybe in the classroom. Uh, I, I create a video of it, I post it up onto YouTube, and then it gets disseminated in that way. Sometimes uh, it, it can be virally transmitted. In other words, it, it certainly and exponentially grows in, in terms of its audience number. I'll give you an example. Um, I gave a presentation this time last year, it's now about June, June time in 2010 and, and at that point I went to a teach meet in a place called Exeter, a little school, and there were 15 people, that's one five, 15 people there watching me in the audience and isolated experience in this instance because I gave the presentation, there wasn't much of an idea about whether they want to ask any questions or not, so there were no questions posed to me. And as I was walking out the door, I thought, wow, that's a real damp squim, isn't it? That, that didn't go down very well at all. I was talking about Web 3.0, which to, to me is, is quite a phenomenal step forward in the way we were, we're going to be learning in the future using web tools. And not a single person wanted to ask a question. But as I went out the door, someone said to me, oh, um, do you think you, you would be able to share that slide set with me, please? And I said, sure, I, you know, I'll stick it onto SlideShare. So I stuck it onto Slideshow that night and posted it onto Twitter and also onto my blog and said, look, here it is, if you want to have a look at it, here's the presentation I've just given. It went viral. I don't know how it went viral, but people tweeted it and retweeted it and, and people took my blog post and retweeted that as well. Um, they took the Slideshare and embedded it in their blogs. They commented on it. They shared it with each other through various social media. I had 15,000 hits in the first week. I'm not kidding, that's, that's a 1,000% increase on my audience. Uh, essentially, the social web tools amplified my content. And because I had slapped a CC, a Creative Commons license on there for repurposing, people have subsequently translated that into various languages as well. And they've done a very good job, I have to say. So it's in Spanish, it's in Portuguese, it's in French, it's in German, and so on. And it's that, that to me is how you create a, a viral um, distribution. Well, it, that you don't create it, it happens on its own. But the viral distribution happens um, as a result of something isolated being shared on the social web. Um, well, actually, you might probably just answered the last question. She's here, she's here by the way. <laughs> yeah, right I'm here. here. <laughs> And that is, um, well, does learning 2.0 fundamentally change <coughs> educational landscapes? Um, 
This is, I'm going to change my own landscape on my own face because the sun's come out. And I'll finish it <laughs> off with shades. Uh, does, it, does it fundamentally change the landscape? Yes, yes, it has, and it, it is changing the landscape, I think, of, of education because um, there are so many possibilities open to us now which weren't available before. Um, that there, uh, it, where do I start to, to talk about this? Um, the, 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 the fact is, there are so many ways now of communicating with each other. There are so many ways now of sharing content with each other. There are so many ways of collaborating with each other and cooperating with each other that we would be here until Christmas time talking about them all. Suffice it to say that the, the landscape of education is changing drastically in some areas. Here's the caveat. Um, it's changing drastically, but it's only changing in some areas. And, and, and those areas are areas where there are people who are um, disruptive in their approach to education, people who are inquisitive or, or innovative in the way that they want to um, help learners to learn. And those are the ones that are exploiting these tools in a really big way. Those are the ones that are, are taking risks, maybe even sometimes against their own institutional policies. And they are stepping out and they are asking for forgiveness rather than permission. Um, that there's a clue for you. They are taking risks and they are doing things in a different way because they know that the opportunities exist. Now, if we miss out on those opportunities, we're foolish. But there are still people, obviously, who are stuck in the old paradigm, the old model, the old industrial model of learning, um, which means that that precludes them from using these new tools, or in fact it dissuades them from using them in some ways. So there are always people that will have objections to these new technologies, but I think it's changing the landscape for all those who are engaging within them and actually doing new things with them. And, and, and learning 2.0, or whatever you want to call it, learning with these new social web tools is an exciting proposition because it's giving learners more control over their own learning. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. You're in the world.